Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. It's Coach Sherry Ann here with Arizona AARP, and we are outside. Obviously, you can see that. This is our first live in-person event, and it is a little chilly, so I was expecting not too many people to show up because the cold usually tends to keep people inside, especially here in Arizona because we're here for the sun. Uh, but thank you for joining us. So we are here at Rose Mofford Park, and it is a wonderful, wonderful facility. I strongly encourage you to come visit. It is between Dunlap and Peoria off of 25th Avenue. So right off of the I-17, super easy to access. And so we are here on the Fit Lot. So what the Fit Lot is, is AARP joined with the City of Phoenix and created this beautiful facility. And we do have one person here with us, so we will get going with Patty here really soon. And, but this fit lot, I do want to encourage you to come check it out because it's a beautiful, a lot of money was put into this. We'll go through each of these little exercise facility um, positions for you to check out. I do want you to come and check this out really quick right here. So when you do come to the fit lot, there will be a QR code that you can scan for a video on how to use the equipment if you're not sure, if you don't remember, but we'll go over each of them today. But it is very user friendly. So there's this here to check for each station. Um, so definitely come out to the Rose Mofford Park and check out what ARP has put in here with the city of Phoenix. It's the only one here in the city. So definitely come check it out with the spongy floor. So if you tend to trip and fall, you're safe. <laughs> It'll absorb your fall. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with some basic moves. So today for back to basics, and it's the beginning of the year because everyone has New Year's intentions to get fit, healthier, and that's why we wanted to do this. So just some basic moves that if you come out to the park, you can utilize f this facility. But if you're at home, we'll kind of go over some e exercises that you can do at home as well. Um, so if you are joining us, I do want you to know that I will not be able to see any of your questions that are coming in, but I promise you I will circle back around and answer any questions. And if you have any suggestions, please feel free to put those in there too. Let me know where you are tuning in from because I always love to see that. So I will circle back around just so that you know. All right, so to get started, let's go ahead and it's Patty, right? You're going to be my guinea pig. So this facility right here is a cardio stepper. So go ahead and step on up, put your hands here to stabilize yourself. And all you're gonna do is you're just gonna use your own body weight. Yep, and you're gonna be doing some steps. I strongly encourage you to keep your hands on this so you don't fall off. <laughs> but if you wanna go with one hand, you can definitely go with one hand if it makes you feel better because then you'll have to use some of your core. But this is just like doing stairs, just a little cardio stepper. And this is a great way to get warmed up because it is a little chilly outside. So I'm gonna let Patty do this just to get some, some juices flowing, get the muscles warm so that she can feel good about moving on to some ex other exercises. And if you're at home, one thing that you can do at home is just march in place. So, and when, I, when you're marching, make sure that you're bringing that leg all the way up to your hip. I just don't want little marches like this. Really hip, use that hip. Get those legs all the way up so you're gonna march. And I encourage people to march. I tell my mom this and my dad this all the time. When you're walking places, every once in a while, just start marching. You'll look a little silly, but you know what? It really reminds you to pick your feet up because we have a tendency to not pick our feet up very much. And that's when we can have accidents and we can trip and fall and we want to avoid falling. So marching is good. You feeling a little warmer now? Awesome. Very good. All right. Hop on off. Let's go on over here to this one. I'll have, I'll let Dawn circle around with the camera. So this one is just for you to be able to use your upper body. So sometimes some lots will have it to where when you put your arms here and you push out, yep, you're gonna go ahead and put your arms here and you're gonna pull back. Sometimes it's set to where you're having to push your own body weight up. I've seen chairs where they move up, but this is really just to get some shoulder mobility and you can really push out. And then when you're pulling back, really engage these back muscles to pull back. So this is gonna use your chest, biceps, and your back and really help with shoulder mobility. So this just really warms up the shoulders because people have a tendency to get really tight shoulders. And also as we do things, we have a tendency to roll our shoulders forward. And this will really help bring your shoulders back to use those back muscles. Once again, if you're confused about what to do, there's these great placards right here that you can utilize. Pretty simple, right? <laughs> awesome. All right, let's come on over here to this one. And so this is a bench. And this is a two-sided one. So this one will allow you so you can lay on your back with your head up this way. You're gonna land, yep, perfect. I love it. 
hands go up here. And what you can do is, now we're just gonna keep our legs bent like this, keep them 90 degrees. You're gonna bring your knee up, just bring your knee up. Yep, like that. Yep, and now alternate. Yep, no, do you, and then you'll do your other leg. So go ahead and scoot down this way so that your, so your arms are straight. Because there you go. Yep, and then you're just gonna do one knee at a time. Yep. Right, you have to hold your head up. I wish that this, if I were making this, I would have made the bench a little longer because you can have a tendency to strain. Yep. So, and then if we, when you're ready, you could do straight legs. You know, there you go. Yep. So a bent leg is a shorter lever, so it's a little easier. So that's why I had you start with your straight, your bent leg. And then when you're ready, you can go to a straight leg. And then you, once you're comfortable, you can alternate. Yeah, that, I would have made this bench a little longer <laughs> if I were making this. So another option for you, no, you can go and spin around. We'll do it the other way. Yeah, you bring a pillow if you're going to do that one, right? <laughs> We're not napping. So go ahead and have a seat. You're going to straddle this. And if you want, you can put your toes up in here. And this would take, you know, a lot of coordination because I don't want anybody to fall off the bench. But that's really what you're going to do is you're going to anchor your feet. And then you're just going to lean back until you're comfortable. You don't have to go all the way back until you're comfortable. And then come up. Yeah. So this helps brace. But, yeah, and some people, if you only are able to lean back, just a tiny bit, a couple of inches and come up, you're getting all kinds of core exercise. And this is, our core is really, really critical to help with stability. Yep, and you can do whatever you want with your hands. You can cross them. If you want to just stabilize and hang onto your legs, you can. Just if you're hanging onto your legs, make sure you're not pulling yourself up. But you got a good core there, Patty. Yes, <laughs> excellent, excellent. So very good. Yeah, so like I said, though, if you're not comfortable with laying all the way back, then don't do it because you might strain yourself. So just go back a little bit and then come back up. So now we'll move on to these. So these are pull-up bars. This is a very advanced exercise. So most people aren't able to do pull-ups. They're really, really very, very hard. So what you could do if you're wanting to do this is you can also just hang and then engage, go ahead and hang, I'm gonna show you. It's the precursor, yep. So go ahead and just, you can keep your feet on the ground, but go ahead and kind of hang on your arms a little bit. So what you're gonna do is these muscles back here, your scapular muscles, so just engage those and pull those down. And all you're gonna do is the little move up, like you're getting ready to do a pull up. Yep. So it's like you're gonna pull your body, you're gonna pull your, like pretend like you're gonna pull the bar down. So if you pull the bar down, you engage these back muscles, right? And it's not a big move. But it's what you can do to get ready to do a pull-up. And I know that pull-ups, like I said, are very advanced. Most people aren't interested in trying to do a pull-up. You know, but you can definitely hang from the bar and engage these back muscles as if you're going to do a pull-up. Because you need these back muscles to do all kinds of movements. When you're putting your suitcase in the overhead storage bin of an airplane, like if you're traveling, you want to be able to pick that up and put that up there. That's the same movement as pulling down on the bar and doing a pull-up. Most people don't think about it that way, but it is. It's just the opposing move. So does that make sense? Yeah. So this is a challenging one, but it's one that you can work up to and kind of utilize at your will. All right, let's come on over here to this one. So this is parallel bars. This is a very interesting um, and fun. You can do all kinds of things on this. So what you'd like, what we can try to do is go ahead and come up here and <laughs> you can put your hands on the bar. So you're going to put them on here and you can learn, start to pick your knees up. Yep. And if you, yeah, or, and if you ever, if you get the strength, it's, it takes a lot of strength to hold our own body weight up. So what you can do is you can turn around and put your back against this. I'm going to have you walk in. So you can brace against the back, put your arms and almost your elbows on the bar too. Yep, and hold the bar, yep, just like that. And then and then you can lift, if you wanted to try, this is a very advanced move once again, but you can try to lift both of your legs up by bracing on the bar. Yep, just like that. See, did you surprise yourself? Yeah. She surprised herself. I love it, I love it. See, yeah. it's sometimes doing it's exercises are uncomfortable when you're a little nervous, but having me here gives you some confidence. But it's a different exercise to be able to pick both of your legs up. Like I said, this is a very advanced move. The next thing that some people could do is try to push up on the bar and lift their feet off the ground and lock your arms out. See? Just like that. That's the other reason to do on parallel bars. Yep. Yeah. 
And where do you feel it? Yep, shoulders and probably upper back. Yep. So once again, if this is advanced for you, there's modifications that you can do just like we did with Patty. Use the QR code that's on the placard as well because what it'll do is it will show you also some other things that, of possibilities that you can do with the parallel bars. I love that that surprised you though. That makes me happy. <laughs> All right, come on over here. So this is another cardio one. Oh, you're getting warm. <laughs> I love it. So this is another cardio one that you can do. It's a lot like an elliptical. And if you've been to the gym, you've seen these ellipticals because they're very, very popular at the gym. So it's going to go, instead of the stair stepper going up and down, this is going to go in a circular motion. And the arms alternate. So you have to kind of get it going. It might be, is it frozen? There we go. I was wondering if it was frozen. <laughs> so if, you've, if you see these at the gym, these are a great alternative to running and cycling. And it's just cardio and you get the upper body involved. Sometimes you can use less legs and actually pull or push. Oh, you can go backwards and forwards. You can't. It's, there's a lot of opportunity to do different things with an elliptical. But yeah, you can rely solely on your upper body, pulling and pushing. There you go. And going in a circular motion. Yep. You've, have you ever been on an elliptical? It's been a while. Yeah. So this is a great alternative to, like I said, running, walking, hiking, or cycling. And here, you see these usually at the gym, or you can come to the fit lot and use it here. But this is a great, another activity to use to warm up and just get some cardio in. And going backwards is really <laughs> wonderful for the brain, because like you said, you kind of like startled yourself a little bit there, I think, when you started going backwards. Because we're not used to walking backwards. We're not used to doing things backwards. So it's a good thing to do, because not only are you getting a physical aspect out of it, but you're also training and tricking your brain to try something new. Yep. <laughs> awesome. So now we're going to come over here to the ladder. So this is, uh, you can use, you have to bring your own bands if you have bands. So these are different, two different kinds of bands. So this is, uh, they call these TheraBands. You can get them for therapy. You can buy these at Walmart, Target. Amazon, pretty much anywhere. But, and there's different thicknesses, so different resistance. So this is a really tough one. Um, and then you have these exercise bands that actually have handles. So these are a little easier to hold on to, and these also have different tensions. Once again, you can buy these pretty much anywhere. Have you ever used? Yeah. Yep, perfect. So what you can do here is you just would loop this around. Actually, let's use the handles. So go ahead and grab those two handles. And what you can do is just stand there and you're going to like row back, like you're going to pull back. Yep. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure your legs are stable, you're using your back to pull back. Yep. A nice back exercise. If you wanted to make it a compound exercise, and compound exercises are when you're doing multiple things at once. So you could actually squat down a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so you're doing some lower body as well as some upper body. Yep, so these are great compound exercises that you can do. And once again, there's a little QR code here, and they have, you know, stretching and resistant band station. So they just don't supply you with the bands, but they'll give you some ideas of things that you can do on the ladder. And depending upon where you put the band, you can try different things. Like we're going to put it higher. over this top one and so this way when you're you're doing it a little higher i want you to try it and tell me what you feel different because when it's lower versus higher if you feel any different uh, not much that, that, no that's okay it does work the muscles anytime you change the angle of an exercise it works the muscle just slightly differently and the thing about the fit lot and what's great here is these are functional things that you, you are going to be doing throughout your day and, and just living. And so it's important to keep functional muscles nice and strong. And then if you wanted to loop it lower and do bicep, you could do that. 
You can also stand on these, but it's nice to have it at a different angle. So you'll stand closer, yep, and then now you're just gonna do a bicep curl. Yep. So this is a great station. I love this because you can just change it up based on the angle of where you put your, your band and do different exercises. So if you haven't checked out the Fit Lot, please come over to Rose Moffer because ARP did a wonderful thing in partnering with the City of Phoenix and putting this exercise facility in. And if you haven't noticed, like I mentioned earlier, the ground is this nice spongy soft surface. So it's very, very comfortable. Plus there's other activities to do here. There's uh, sand volleyball, there's racquetball, there's I believe pickleball over there. There's tennis. What's that? I was gonna ask that. If there's pickleball, yes. Uh, there's baseball fields, basketball courts, there's huge grassy fields, a playground for children and grandchildren. So come check out Rose Mofford. Um, and so before we go though, because all of those of you that are at home that didn't come out and play with me in person, I do want to go over a few things for you that you can do at home to help with mobility and getting moving in your home. So we're going to move over here and um, Alex, I'll have you move your computer. <laughs> So there's these beautiful step-up stations. So this is another station here at the Fit Lot. And what you can do with these, and Patty, please join me. So depending upon your level of comfort of stepping up high or low, it's beautiful because they do have three levels here. And these are great just stepping up and then stepping down. And alternate your legs. Another one is to step so to the side. Because most people don't do side-to-side -side movements. Everything we do is forward and backwards, but we have these beautiful muscles on the side of our legs, on the inside of our legs that we want to train as well because this is all for stability to keep you more, up, more upright and not falling down. <laughs> so use, you can use a step at home if you have steps. You can use a sturdy bench at home. Um, there's different things that you can use. You can use a curb. You can just go outside and use your curb if you don't have the ability to do that. So the other thing that I really like for people to pay attention to, and I'll have you use that bench, Patty, um, use a higher bench that's more of like a sitting level for you. But what I want you to focus on is when you go to sit, I really want you to try to control your body so you don't just like plop down. Really, and what's happening is as we age, we have a tendency to sit more and more in life. And the more you sit, the more you lose those muscles to stand up. And when you get ready to stand up, what I'd like for you to work at doing is not rocking to stand up, but really just planting those feet sturdy, hip width apart, and just stand up as much as you can. And the lower the bench, the harder it is. So I mean, like, <laughs> if you go down to this one, you know, you really got to use a lot of muscles to stand up. Yeah, that was great. There was no rocking. Yeah, a lot of people have a tendency to rock to get up. Like if you think about it, the next time you get up off your couch at home, pay attention if you're rocking to get up. Yes. So that's a great exercise just to make sure that you're focusing on standing because we have a tendency to sit a lot and we lose those standing muscles. So that I love that, that you do that. And you can, if you're at home, I didn't bring my jug. I meant to bring a jug. I had a, so if you have a jug at home, a milk carton, water jug. You can do squats at home holding the jug between your legs and then just standing up and that's you can do a weighted squat but only do that if you're comfortable doing a rate you know a normal squat sitting down and standing back up. Okay have you ever done a weighted squat? Yeah. Yes perfect perfect. So the next one I would like for people to and you have probably need to use something to stabilize you if you're not comfortable but is doing heel raises and you can do when you're ready you can do one leg or you can do both and if you're able to do it without holding on to something even better but a lot of times until you're used to it you might need some stability but if you can get to where you're going up on your toes and down <laughs> yeah do it one legged yes <laughs> but this will help also with stability another stability exercise that we have a tendency to take for granted and but this will really help you and then the next phase if you can do this without holding on to anything is close your eyes if you can do it with closing your eyes it changes the ball game a lot so close your eyes and if you can come up on your toes hold it see i <laughs> we're so visually used to having things to keep our balance 
and we want to really focus on keeping your balance, which we'll do balance in a couple of months. And so, but doing heel raises is a great exercise. So another one I would like for people to work on, and we're going to go back over here to the, the parallel bars. So when you're at home, because I don't have a wall, but we're going to pretend this is a wall. So I want you to put your hands here, walk your feet out to where you're comfortable, and I want you to just do a wall push-up. We're going to call these a bar push-up because we're here at the park. So walk your feet in just a little bit because what I'd like for you to do is have the bar hit you right across the chest. There you go. So if you're at home, just imagine it being a wall and you're leaning into the wall and pushing away and just doing wall push-ups. And if you want, you can use a very sturdy chair at home. You could use your couch. If you use your couch, it's lower, so you're supporting more of your body weight. The more vertical you are up against a wall, the less you're having to support your body weight. The farther down you go, the more body weight. And eventually, if you can do a push-up on the ground, yes. And you can even start with doing your push-ups on your knees if you're doing them on the ground. But doing wall push-ups, that's really going to be something good that you can easily do at home. The next thing that I would like for people to focus on is getting, I call them up and downs, and that's getting up out of the floor. <laughs> Believe it or not, we have a tendency to not ever get down on the floor as we age, but you want to be able to get up. Okay, so we're just going to sit down, and I'd like for you to use as many different ways as you need to to get up. A lot of people have a tendency to go to all fours first, and then they stand up. You can, if you can do that, great. If you can get up with one hand, awesome. See, so do whatever you need to do, wherever you're comfortable at, but practice getting up out of the floor. And a lot of it is just because we don't do that. But if you do fall, you want to be able to get up. And if you aren't practicing it, you might have a problem. So let's practice getting up out of the floor. And until you're comfortable, you can try different things. The first thing that most people do is they'll just go over to both their hands and their knees and then they just push themselves up. And if you need to get to your hands and knees and get to where you can get to a wall to help you up, do that. But practice getting up and down. Even squatting down to get down on the ground. Most people have a hard time bending over to squat down to sit down. It's one thing that we just really take for granted that we don't think about until we're in a situation where we're like, oh, how do I get up out of the floor? <laughs> But if you have grandkids, your grandkids are going to be playing on the floor. So play with them. You know, practice getting up out of the floor, however you need to get up. And eventually, if you can do it with no hands, that would be really great. I usually stay like this. <laughs> but the, come on, Patty. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, and the other reason why I forgot my jug, too, I'm really bummed about. But carry, practice carrying a bag of books or a, like I said, a gallon of milk. And I want you to practice carrying it just on one side. And the purpose of doing this is because if you wanna keep traveling and being mobile, you need to be able to carry like a suitcase or help carrying you know, groceries or anything. So practice carrying a bag of books or a gallon of water, juice, milk, whatever, on each side and just walk around your house doing it. And then you'll get to a point to where practice like, lifting it up over your head just so that you can make sure that you can still do that. One of my goals is by the time I'm 90, I can still lift my carry-on suitcase above my head and put it in the overhead carry case <laughs> on an airplane. <laughs> but we don't think about things like that until we're once again in that situation. So practice carrying different things on each side. And so one of the other things too that we had talked about back over here with doing the chest exercise was shoulder mobility. So when you're at home, you know, do your shoulders ever get tight, Patty? Yeah, and it's, yep. So just carry, you can do it with nothing in your hands at first. And then eventually what you can do is you can hold a can in each hand, like a food can or a 16 ounce water bottle. And you're just going to do little circles forward. And then you're going to do them backwards. And just, this really helps just keep, because our shoulder is the most complicated joint that we have. So doing shoulder circles forward and backwards, and then getting to a point to where you're pressing up over your head, whether you're doing it with nothing in your hands, you could stand on your band if you have a really flexible band, because if it's a strong band, if you're standing on it to get it all over your head is rather challenging. So, but doing, pushing, doing a shoulder press, 
once again, got to get that suitcase in that overhead carry on <laughs> spot. So, and putting our things away in your house, like getting something up high, you know, we want to think about things that are going to help us stay mobile and stay active. So overhead shoulder press. And, um, one of the last things, and I'd mentioned over here, stepping up sideways on the bench is walking sideways. Do you ever walk sideways or backwards? Yes. So these are things that you can do in your house. So when you're walking sideways, we can just walk normally, but I like to put a little, you know, fun into it and do a squat. I'm so used to wearing these. <laughs> I'm not used to wearing these. It was kind of a joke. <laughs> so doing a squat and coming to the side and you can just do back and forth, you know, to make sure that we're really utilizing those lateral muscles because we use so much of everything that we do is forward. So walking sideways. And if you get to the point with the bands, we, they have bands that are just little circles that you can put around your knees to give you some extra um, resistance. So when you're walking sideways to really train those lateral muscles, those outside muscles and those internal muscles, and then walking backwards, believe it or not, if people have trouble walking forwards and they drag their feet, Walking backwards is one of the best things. And when you're walking backwards, make sure you're going toe to heel to really do it the opposite of what you would normally do walking. You'd be surprised that you're going to step off. If <laughs> no falling today. <laughs> but walking backwards is a great way to really make sure that the brain is staying sharp and having an awareness level within our own bodies and what we're doing. So walking backwards is a huge one. So those are some things that you can do around your house just to get moving. And as we go along with Back to Basics, we'll definitely do some more exercise ones. We're going to be out here um, in a month again. So if you are watching, um, February, thank you for the date. February 21st, we'll be back here at 10 a.m. So please come join me. I believe then we are talking about, um, it's either going to be balance or it's going to be stretching. I can't remember which, but they're both great. I think it's stretching first, then we'll do balance on the third one. And so stretching is a great way to just to stay mobile and flexible. And so please join us at 10 a.m. Uh, in two weeks, though, we will be talking about, I can't remember what our topic is in two weeks. <laughs> I do apologize, but we, I will be doing a promo to show you, to talk about what it's going to be. But I will see you in two weeks and the AARP Arizona Facebook page. So I'll see you then.